הרמב״ם, בזמנו הפייס הצליח הרבה אנשים מהם, שם בא שם מדי חדש. Given all praises to Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai Bashem, Rakaq Kadash. And I'm going to entitle this video Revelation 12, verse 17. And who is the Black Adam? That's clearly clickbait. But anyway, somebody asked a question. So this video was based upon a question that was asked by Ancient History Revisited, <clears throat> commented, Shalom, is Adam connected to the saints who hold the testimony of Yahweh Shai in Revelation 12, verse 17, that will be at war with the dragon through the generations So now let's go to the actual precept. Let's do it this way. Now he said generation, generations, not generation. And I may just breeze through this chapter. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of the Most High and have the testimony of Yahweh Shai HaMashiach. So the question was, let me come back to the question. Shalom is Adam connected to the saints who hold the testimony of Yahweh Shai in Revelation 12, verse 17, that will be at war with the dragon through the generations. Well, we're talking about the last generation before the uh, deliverance and the destruction of the dragon. And the dragon, as you know or should know, he had a, a dragon, go, the dragon go back, goes back 2000, over 2,000 years ago which is the Roman Empire. And you have the current dragon, which is uh, the, uh, the uh, 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 NATO, the EU, United States and Canada. And United States and Canada are part of the dragon because, and also at the same time, the United States is also the whore, that great city Babylon. So America is really three things. There's the beast, beast that came out of the seven, which is supported by the, it, it sits upon the, the beast, the scarlet colored beast, which is uh, European nations, NATO and EU. So let me come back over here. <clears throat> So what part does Black Adam <laughs> play on that? Because Adam was a so-called black, a so-called black man. Um, so we know who the drag, we know which dragon this is talking about. This is talking about the current dragon. What was Roth? Well, when you read the whole chapter, it's talking about the dragon of two thousand years ago, and also. The dragon of now. Matter of fact, you know what I'm gonna do? Let me do this. Because we're gonna get prophetic up in here.
the drag the word dragon is only written here a uh, a handful of times in the Old Testament in the Tanakh, if you will, but it's written from Revelation 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, what is it, 12, 13 times? And it's, and it's not written in uh, any other Gospels, Mark, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, it's not written in Acts. Uh, it's only written in the book of Revelation, which means the revealing. You, get the, you got the word apocalypse, apocalypse, apocalyptic, which simply means revelation, to pull back the veil. Like the price is right. What is that? The price is right. Or let's make a deal. Let's make a deal. You know, you pick a curtain and you, you know, you win a car, you win a donkey. And you may win that car after it's revealed. So the book of Revelation or the apocalypse, the book of the apocalypse just simply means something being revealed. You know, who's behind door number two? So let's just read some of these. Let's read these precepts here. Because sometimes the word dragon in the New Testament or Revelation but the book of Revelation sometimes is talking about the ancient Roman Empire, sometimes it's talking about the modern beast, the re, re, uh, revitalized beast. So Revelation, and I said I was going to go through Revelation 12. Hell, I might as well just go through it because it's, it's what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven times. So you know what I'm going to do? Just go ahead and Let's go to Revelation. And this and this is something that the Blue Letter recently added to, to their site, maybe a year ago, maybe a year and a half ago. They got the headlines. And they and like I said, they hit these guys are either hit or miss. It says the woman Israel, because what scholars say is that it's talking about the Roman Catholic Church. Or it's talking about Mother Mary. No, it's talking about the nation of Israel. So if they know that it's talking about the nation, the, the children, the sons of Israel, then they should know all, all the other characters. So let's go ahead and read this. And they appeared a, a great one day in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun. And the moon, the sun represents knowledge. The moon represents wisdom. So you have wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. You know, knowledge is to get, I give you something, right? Then you have the understanding to make it happen. So with wisdom, knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, all three go together as to have a, a intel, insight, data, information. And see, we possess wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. And the moon under her feet, and upon her head, a crown of 12 stars. The 12 stars represent the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. Now, there's a reference, and I'm not going to go to it. Somebody can put the precept in the, uh, you know, the comment section of uh, Joseph having a dream about his brethren. Uh, bound the stars bound down to him. So who are those stars? His brothers. They became the Israelites. Any children that they had became the Israelites. And don't listen to Fopi with, oh, if you lay with an Edomite, your son is not an Israelite. Your daughter is not an Israelite. They're heathens. Well, guess what? All the 12 sons that came out of all the, all the 12 tribes that came out of the initial 12, it was really, you really got to go to Joseph, and then you got to go to the two sons of Joseph, which makes up the tribe. Because there's no tribe but Joseph, even though it's mentioned in certain scriptures where it says Joseph, we know it's talking about the tribe of Ephraim, which was the youngest son of Joseph, not Manasseh. The oldest son was supposed to get the blessing. 
you know the whole story. Somebody could put in the, the, the comment section the whole story of uh, Joseph presenting his two sons to Jacob. And Jacob uh, puts his right hand on Ephraim and his left hand on uh, Manasseh. And uh, Joseph says, not so, my Lord. Uh, the oldest, the firstborn is Manasseh. I should even go into it. I might go into it later, but I, I mean, I explained it. And it was through, and it was through the spirit that the most I didn't give to Joseph, but gave to Jacob. The J spirit was working with Jacob to show you that this is the prominent son. This is the, this is the son. He's almost like the firstborn, even though he wasn't the firstborn. And he said, uh, this is the one that's going to be great. So Ephraim became greater than Manasseh. And Judah became greater than them all. It was supposed to be Reuben. Reuben uh, committed adultery with uh, his father's wife, went up to his bed with uh, one of the, uh, the handmaids of uh, Rachel and Leah. I went through that about a month ago. So there's a lot of history in this thing. So it went from uh, Reuben, he was supposed to be the first firstborn, the, the head, and because his mishap, it went to Levi, because they're the priests. Then from Levi, it went to Judah. Now it says in Genesis, a law giver from between his feet, which Judah is part of the, you know, administering of the law along with Levi. Because what was what was King King David, King Solomon, the kings? They were supposed to be head over the Levites. They were like the Supreme Court over the Levites, so you can understand. So we know that this is talking about Israel, and even the blue letter says that the woman, Israel. Uh, second verse, and she being with child, cried, traveling in birth and pain to be delivered. Now, let me see what the commentators say. We know this is talking about the son of the Most High, right? All right? Give me a second here. Let me see what these guys say. Cambridge Bridge for schools and colleges is not saying too much. It says, and she uh, paying to be delivered. There is probably a, a reminiscence of uh, Genesis 3, 16, and perhaps of St. John 16, verse 21. A, a woman, when she is in travail, have sorrow because, there, because her hour is come. But as soon as the as she is the she delivers of the child, she remembereth no more the anguish for joy that a man is born into the world. That's a general statement, as well as uh, Micah 4 verse 10, be in pain and labor to bring forth, O daughter of Zion, which represents Israel, like a woman in travail, for now sh shall you go forth out of the city and you shall dwell in the field and that this is it this goes hand in hand with revelation chapter 12 this is exactly what it's talking about be in pain that's talking about israel delivering the child yahweh shai and what is that matthew's the second chapter i'm not going to go to it somebody can help me out they can, they can give me the precepts in the, in the comment section where there was a decree, decree put down by Herod, the Herodian dynasty. I'm sorry, it was uh, Herod the Great. Um, he was a patriarch of the dynasty to kill all, and it says ch children, but in the Hebrew, the word children means sons. So he wasn't killing babies. He was killing sons because they knew that the Messiah was going to come as a man 
every child two years old and under because they saw that star. That, that star. But the angel Gabriel went, in, which is part of the Holy Spirit, the uh, Harakakwadash, the, the Spirit Holy, went to, Gabriel went, came, showed himself to Joseph in a dream. See, sometimes the angels come in a physical form. Sometimes they can come in looking like beasts. Sometimes they can come in looking like angels. Sometimes they can come into your dreams. So he told him to flee in Egypt. Why Egypt? And they'll say, well, he, well, that proves he was black, which is true. The reason why he fled into Egypt, because Egypt was a large, it had to be millions of Israelites living in uh, Egypt. You had Alexandria, Egypt. The biggest uh, pilgrimage, according to the scriptures, would have to be the Israelites, you know, in Acts, the second chapter, it came out of Alexandria, Egypt. That was a, a big community of Israelites who lived and had gave birth to children, had businesses in Egypt. To which, the, and, and by the way, the place that they, that they lived in was Alexandria and other places, but Alexandria was a major place. That's where that great library was built the uh, library of uh, in Ale Alexandria, Egypt. So you had all these different uh, scholars from different nations and different beliefs that went to this uh, library. And I believe that's a whole concept of the libraries today. That's a whole nother subject. But uh, so, you know, in other words, that's why these are going to Egypt. Because the Romans wasn't going to go down in Egypt and try to because they would have got most likely taken over. Remember what happened going to the story of Carthage and uh, Hannibal. Anytime the Romans, see the Romans tried to take down Carthage. Carthage, loosely translated in the Hebrew means new city. And Han Hannibal, uh, Barkov means, uh, is Hebrew, blessed. Depending on how you spell it or say it, it either means lightning or blessed. I believe it means lightning. But Barkov, Ba Barak, uh, ba Barak, either, either blessing or lightning. I believe it translates into lightning because he, he was like lightning. And so the Romans tried to take down Carthage many a time and never succeeded. They always got their, you know, asses handed to them. But uh, Hannibal said, well, let's go take them down. And the reason why he couldn't take them down because of the mountains, the mountain region, the, the Alps, I think it's called the Alps, mountains, if I'm saying it correctly. And, and he lost a lot of men in that cold because they're from a warm climate. They wouldn't use to that cold. So he came, came to meet uh, the Roman Empire, the Roman armies, the, the legions, with less than half the men. It says to which... The main uh, reference is, I'm sorry, let me come back to this. Let me come back to this. Uh, be in pain and labor to bring forth, that's Yahweh Shai, O daughter of Zion, that's the sons of Israel, like a woman in travail, that was Matthew's too. For now shall you go forth out of the city and you shall dwell in the field, and the field represents uh, it represents the uh, you know Africa going into Babylon and you shall go even to Babylon and that's talking about America the field in other words is wilderness which is Africa there shall you be delivered there out of Babylon the Lord shall redeem you from the hand of your enemies so who is the enemy in this, in this sense, Esau, he's the number one enemy. To which the main reference is uh, Matthew 24, verse 8. All these are the beginning of sorrows. And as he went out of the temple, one of the disciples said, you know, concerning the end of the world. 
All right, let me see if they say anything about Rome. They kind of hinted on it. Let me try this. Let me try this. Okay, so we're all the, all the way here at the bottom. Gills exposit exposition of the entire Bible. And she being big with the child, which may be ex expressive of the fruitfulness of the church, church is Israel, tells you that in Acts, in Acts 7, in uh, bearing the, and bringing forth many souls to the Lord the Messiah, and which were very numerous in this period of time when it was said of Zion that this and that man was born in her and particularly of her pregnancy with the kingdom of the Messiah, that's really the Messiah, to be brought forth and set up in the Roman Empire. Under So we know who the dragon is. The dragon represents the Roman Empire under the orders of Herod the Great. The, the, that's his name. The, the, the geek, the creek under the influence of a Roman emperor. And this being her case, she cried travailing with birth and birth and pain to be delivered, which are metaphors taken from a woman in travail and may labor pains, uh, may either denote the earnest cries and fervent prayers of the members of the church and the, no, they were crying because the babies were getting, the baby boys were getting killed. And the, and show you that, that this man is a devil. And the lab, laborious, laborious and painful ministrations of the preachers of the gospel, they go off <laughs> for the uh, conversion of souls, uh, setting up the blah, 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 and the empire. Uh, they clearly go off, but they, they they hit it right, but they didn't know how to answer it. That was the order of uh, Harrod, the great, the Greek, the, the, the geek, giving the order out. And he was under, anything he did, he had to go get permission, permission from the, uh, you know, the Roman, higher Roman government. So they're the only ones that hit it. Oh, here it is again. Matthew Henry's. Okay, let me go right to the middle. The dragon is no is is a known emblem of Satan and his chief agents, or those who govern for him on earth. And right, it's the Roman Empire governed for Satan on earth. At that time, the pagan empire of Rome. Uh, the city built upon seven hills. And that has nothing to do to get these guys. The seven heads represent seven hills. I'm not talking about that. As having ten horns uh, divided into ten kingdoms, having seven crowns. So they got it, they got it right. They got it half right. So they, they, they know that it's talking about the Roman Empire, which is a dragon. So they pretty much would have to tell you that the Roman, the dragon is the Roman Empire. So now let's come back over here. And it says the red dragon. Red because Edom is red. Satan just means enemy. And this is Yahweh Shai, which they kind of hinted at. Third verse, 
Revelation 12, verse 3, and there appeared another one in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns, and seven crowns upon his head. I mentioned that in the last video I did on Revelation chapter 17. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven. Now, the stars of heaven go back to the first verse. It says 12 stars, right? Let's go back to it. And there appeared a great one in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of 12 stars. The 12 stars represents Israel. So what does the third part represent? It represents three parts. Because nine parts were already on the other side of the world. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. Then you had some of the other tribes from the so-called nine tribes, ten tribes, nine tribes actually, that stayed with the kingdom of Judah. And Asher, um, uh, what's her name? Uh, the prophetess, I believe her name was Asher. And I believe she's from the tribe of Naphtali. Somebody help me out. I'm not going to go look for it. The woman prophetess. And did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered. So this was during the time of the birth of Yahweh Shai. And meanwhile, uh, Joseph and, and his wife were in Egypt. And when the angel came, the angel Gabriel came back to Joseph in a dream. He said, you can go back to Israel because Herod the Great had died. And, and, and he was born in Bethlehem, fled into Egypt. Scripture says, he'll come, my son, shall come out of Egypt. But then he went back to, uh, uh, not Bethlehem, but Nazareth. That's why these wicked scribes and Pharisees said, well, he can't be the Messiah. The Messiah was going to be in, born in uh, Bethlehem, and he was born in Bethlehem. He just didn't tell him. For to devour her child as soon as it was born. And we know that this, this is talking about Yahweh Shai. The male child, Yahweh Shai. They're telling you. So the blue letter, they on point. They're on point. Revelation 12, verse 5. And she brought forth a man child, which is Yahweh Shai, the Messiah, who was to rule all nations, literally, uh, Daniel, Daniel 7, 18, on down, with a rod of iron. And are we going to rule with a rod of iron? Yeah, because we're going to be joint heirs with Yahweh Shai. We're going to have crowns on our head. And it's Yahweh Shai that's going to actually give out the crowns. If you, got, if you got a crown put in your head, that means you're the king. And her child was caught up unto the most high, or the father, and to his throne. So he, so, okay, let's stay on five. The punishment that he had to go through was 2,000 years ago. He, he's, he's not, he didn't come back as ye and your king shall go into captivity. You know, Deut Deuteronomy 28, 36. It's not talking about Yahweh Shai. It's talking about King David, not no King Tacky. Even the spirit <laughs> agreed. So when we come down here, now we got the answer. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of a seed. And that's talking about during the time of Yahweh Shai, during the time of uh, 70 AD. And this is, brings it up to, to date to 70 AD, which keep the commandments of the Mosai and have the testimony of Yahweh Shai, Hamashiach. So the question that was asked, let me go back to it. Ancient history revisited, comment, shalom. Shalom is Adam connected to the saints who hold the testimony of Yahweh Shai in Revelation 12, verse 17, that, 
that will be at war with the dragon through the generations. Well, that, yeah, the, the, our Lord is going to actually make war to deliver us. Because Adam came back as Yahweh Shai. I, I put in the key word, Adam. And um, the main, let me see something. Romans 5, verse 14, nevertheless, death reigned from Adam, the first Adam, to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the single of Adam. You know what that means? We were under a curse. So anybody that came out of the seed of Adam, the Adam's line, that didn't that came out perfect, guess what? They were still they were still under the curse. Uh Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come. Who's the figure of Adam that is that is to come or was to come? Is Yahweh Shai? Because he's Adam all, he's Adam all over again. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 22, for as in Adam all die, even so in Yahweh shall all be made alive. That's the second Adam. This Adam coming, coming back, he's not going to make no mistakes. He's going to come back perfect. And so it, 45th verse of the same chapter, uh, and so it is written, the first Adam was made a living soul the last Adam, which is Yahweh Shai, the same Adam, was made a quickening spirit. Isaiah 47 and 1 on down, it says he shall not meet thee as a man. He's coming as a quickening spirit. Oh, Jude 114. And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints. Now this is this is this is one of the grand grandsons, Enoch of Adam, and Enoch was an important individual that is most most likely among us today. And he saw what Daniel saw in Daniel chapter seven. He saw what John saw. He saw what the prophet saw. So Enoch was definitely a prophet. And he didn't even die. He was just like, now that, he could be Elijah. Because he was taken up like Elijah was taken up. So now let's come on back. Let's come on back. Let's come on back to Verse five, the male child, Hamashiach. So now we come back over here. It speaks about uh, is she being with child, travail with, in birth and pain to be delivered. What child is that? It's talking about Israel because he came out of Israel. But he shall save his people from their sins, right? So he came out of Israel. Spe specifically, he came out of Mary, which, which is an Israelite of the tribe of Judah. Now, high priest Ariah and the seven used to say that Mary was of the tribe of Levi. She was not of the tribe of Levi. She was of the tribe of Judah. That's a whole nother lesson. And that, and that can easily be broken down. Fear first again, and she brought forth a, a man child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron, and her child was caught up unto the Most High, the Father, and to his throne. And the woman, and the woman which, are, which are the Israelites, fled into the wilderness. And we read that in Micah 4, verse 10. Matter of fact, let me go to that again. Micah. Micah 4, verse 10.
I'll start at the ninth verse. Now, why doest thou? You got to read the whole chapter. Thou cry out aloud. Is there no king in thee? Because during that time period, when um, 70 AD, during the time of the Romans taking us over, there was no king because they put an Edomite to be king. The son of Haran. Uh, is, is thy counselor Paris? For pains have taken thee as a woman in travail. For pain have taken thee as a woman in travail. So we know that this is talking about the time when they wanted to kill the Messiah. But bring it up to date is also talking about the time of 70 AD. Be in pain and labor to bring forth, O daughter of Zion, like a woman in travail. For now shalt thou go forth out of the city, out of the Roman Empire, and thou shalt dwell in the field. That's Africa. They we migrated to West Africa for the most part. And thou, all the greatness that comes out of Africa is where Israelites are. And thou shalt, ain't nothing come out of, out of Sudan. And thou shalt go even to Babylon. What Babylon is it talking about? It's talking about America, the daughter of Babylon. There shalt thou be delivered uh, there the Lord Yahweh shall redeem by you back thee from the hand of thine enemy. Who's the, who's the enemy? Esau's the enemy. All of them are enemies, but the last enemy that we're going to be delivered from are the Edomites, not from the Egyptians. So now let's come back over here. And a woman fled into the wilderness where she was, where she have the, had, had a place prepared of the Most High, that they should feed her there a thousand two, a, a one, a thousand two hundred and three score days. And that's talking about right here because we're being taken care of. You ain't got a job, you got a welfare and food stamps and certain pro, uh, uh, section aid and certain things, and then you got jobs. So you're being, that goes back to Deuteronomy 28, uh, what is that, 47? And you shall be in the want of all things from the hands of your enemies. I'm merely paraphrasing. So everything that we got, the house that you live in, the apartment that you live in, the shoes that you wear, the clothes that you wear, the food that you eat, you get, you get it from this man. The angel Michael. Now, this is jumping up because when you read Revelation, as in Revelation chapter 20, it jumps. You know, you read it from the first verse, second verse, third verse, fourth verse. First, now, you might read the eighth verse, which the first verse should be where the eighth verse is, if you understand me. It says, and there was war in heaven. Now, you got these clown ass Christians. Matter of fact, let me see what the commentary says about this because the Christians, I believe this is one of the scriptures that they use that see Satan got jealous of the most high and he wanted his throne and he got some of the righteous angels and he corrupted them and so the church is a joke man the hell And there was war in heaven, Michael and his angels. You even got your Jehovah Witnesses saying that Michael is, is, yeah, is, the, is the Lord. And Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels. So let's see what that means. Let me do this.
Uh, they, okay, it says, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. That's Esau. And the same figure, Satan fell from heaven and was cast out into the earth when he was thrust out of the imperial throne. They go off. And his angels were cast out with him, not only as the heathen priest. Yeah, they don't know what they, the hell they're talking about. No, we don't got to read this. Seven verse again. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angel fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels in the seventh verse. The dragon, re meaning the Roman Empire, the, the, the revised Roman Empire. This is the, nothing but the fulfillment of uh, Revelation 17. You can start in about the 12th verse or so. When they have that war in the heavens. Uh, and prevailed not, neither was their place found anymore in heaven. They were wiped out of the sky by the Yahawashai and the angels led by Michael, which Michael is right behind Yahawashai. Michael will be the second in command behind Yahawashai because Yahawashai is going to actually deliver. He's going to deliver us, so we're going to be in his ship. Remember, his ship can hold well over a million people. That's what Ezra saw. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil, which is a physical uh, devil, and Satan. And the word devil simply goes back to the word di diabolos, which means a false accuser. Like, like um, uh, this guy, uh, Vocab Malone, he's a devil. Why is he a devil? Because he's a false accuser. He's saying we're not the people, and we are the people. And the, and the receipts are a mile high that we're the people. And that's why these small hats jump up when any time some Jake speak about the small hats. They got this guy, Kanye, Kanye West, uh, uh, Ye, Ye. They put in hell on him. He did an they did an interview with uh, Nori. And Nori didn't say anything wrong. Nori was back. He said, no, I said, I, I, got, I got a lot of good Jewish friends. He made it clear. And they get, they jumping on his ass, man. And he's running scared. He covered his ass. When you watch the whole visit video, he covers his ass. He said, uh, it's like a project. Let's say uh, I got beef with some people in the project. I can't hate the whole project. Just the guys that I have beef with. He said, so I got certain people in the industry that are small hats that had helped me out or that did wrong me. So I'm against them people, which are happen to be small hats, but I'm not against, he covered his ass. He covered his ass, but this is how the small hats do. You know, who's in, in charge of everything. When you criticize them, motherfucker, they come down with wrath on you. Or they said something about, uh, yeah, Kanye, uh, yay. He got to go to the Jew, the Holocaust museum. And then he said, look, we still in our Holocaust today. And they took that video down, man. I showed you who, the, who runs this shit. Nine verse. And the great uh, dragon was cast out. And this is getting ready to happen. This is not something that happened thousands of years ago what did the church teach that Satan, the, the be most beautiful, the, the prettiest angel out here got jealous of the most high and got to the ears of, oh no, that's, that's fairy tale. That's, uh, that's uh, what's that? Um, yeah, fairy tales, old wife tales, fables. This means the church don't know, sh the church is a joke, man. You know, this is why, this is what you get in the church. Let me show you something.
Let me show you something. Okay, let me do this. This is what you get in the church. This the, yo, they say he's 107 years old. He got a Gadite, Judite slash, uh, Gas, Gadite slash Judite spirit, you know. Um, they're yeah, doing the fancy dance, and look what he's wearing—a goddamn iron suit with demons all over it. And this is the church, and you can see because you can see the pew, you see a cross in the background. This is what this is what goes on in the church. Madness, complete madness. Complete madness. This is all you're going to get in the church. That's why so many of our people are leaving the church. So now let's come back and watch this shit all day. This shit was funny as hell. Okay, so it says in the dragon, nine verse, in the dragon, and the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan. We know that it's talking about the physical counterpart, the spiritual demon Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. The last deception. Now, when you look up that word deceive, because he's going to deceive the world with the with the charisma. Deceive means to lead into error, not to force. As to get say, if you take this as a help you, this blah, 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 blah. But it's but it's against the most high. So it says deceive the whole world. The word world there is oikomeni as opposed to uh, Eon, which means a time of rulership. Roman Empire had a time of rulership. They're in the second uh, leg of their rulership, and they're and they at the end of their rulership. Their new rulership started in the, mid, in the early to mid-1400s. That's when they came back into power. You know, it was the Turks that took down the, the Christians, you know, the Byzantine, they called the Byzantine Empire, and they took down the Moors, which was nothing but Jake. And most of those Moors, the Moors didn't just uh, embrace Islam. They embraced the law, statutes, and commandments. They were called crypto-Jews as well. The whole world, uh, he was cast out of the earth, and this is getting ready to happen. They're going to have that the blitzkrieg, that warfare up in the sky, and they're going to lose miserably because they're going to see the power of the ships. The ships can disappear, reappear, uh, be as small as a car and be a, as large as a planet. It can multiply into many ships. It can, it can turn into, it can mimic a plane. There's a video brother put up of an actual UFO that turns into a, 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 a plane, a regular plane, like a 747, morphs into a plane. So you can't do, so you're going, you're going to see, you might see UFOs turn into fighter jets and you say, well, they're with the American flag on it. You know, they can do that. And they're going to say, don't hit them. And all of a sudden they're going to shoot at you. And then you're going to go to hit them. They're going to split. You know, they're going to make the, 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 the force fills around them and all that. And his angels were cast out with him. This is getting ready to happen. It says, um, and um, Russia's gaining ground because of what? Because of their air super superiority. They already hit uh, Kiev. Kiev is a, is a is a capital city, the capital of uh, the Ukraine. We used to call it Kiev. Kiev. Once you get that capital city, that's it. You take the whole. You know, you either, either the the prime minister, the president gives up, or he escapes to some other. He might go. Uh, Zelensky might escape and go to, to America. They're going to take care of him. And they're going to be looking to get the land back. And eventually, that's going to become a, a, a Roman, part of the Roman um, 
Empire, I mean, uh, not the Roman, the, the Russian Empire, because it was at one time. So they're getting it back, that assembly of great nations in Jeremiah, either 50 or 51. It says, a 10 verse, and I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now is come salvation. Because what has to come before the kingdom comes, the salvation comes, the great chipping, the karagma, the MOTB, then the destruction, the war. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and his angels and overcome them, and there was no place found in heaven. And then comes the salvation, because we're going to be beamed up, and we're going to see this war. We're going to see the missiles hit Babylon the Great. Only with thine eyes shall thou uh, be, see and behold the reward of the wicked. And some of them wicked are going to be Israelites. And I heard a loud voice saying, in heaven now has come salvation and strength in the kingdom, Daniel 7 and 9 of our power and the power of his Messiah. For the accuser of our br brother, which means devil, false accuser, that's what devil means, is cast down uh, with, and that, and that includes a uh, vocab alone, and his minion, which cues them before our power day and night. 11 verse, and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the See, so, you now once you take that karagma, you that's a digital all. That means that you're, you're saying, once you take that karagma, you're saying that Esau is my master. This world is my master. So when the Lord comes, the Lord ain't going, because you already claimed by somebody. You gave yourself up to the, to the, to the enemy. So he's going to leave you to be, be destroyed. Read Revelation 16, you're going to suffer cancer. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony, which we teach. When we teach, there's a testimony. And they love not their lives unto the death. 12 verse. Therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil has come down unto you. And that's happening right now. Having great wrath because he knoweth that he had but a short time. So the elite knows that they're going down. The fact that Kanye is, is, is talking about these, when they said they'd call us uh, anti-simps, well, guess what? How can we be anti-simps when we're simps ourselves? They don't want to hear that. They don't want to hear that. They can, the small has control everything behind the scenes. Don't be surprised if they kill them or they put them, put them in some... Uh, uh, insane asylum and all these jakes that are, you know playing to be down they're all insides man nori got nervous he got that call he got nervous he didn't want to lose his position all of them and this and this man he comes out just not without no fear and these 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 jakes are kind of dissing in him these famous jakes are distancing, distancing him, themselves from him. Because you messing with the wrong motherfucker. You, you, you messing with the one that controls everything. You messing with the God of the earth. The prince of the power of the air. 13 verse. And when the dragon saw that he was cast unto the earth, he persecuted the woman. Now this, go, this jumps back. This jumps back was brought forth the man child and to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle. Now this is jumping back to 70 AD that she might fly into the wilderness, the wilderness as in Micah 4 and 10 says uh, into a field, right? Which is a wilderness into Babylon into her place and that place is Babylon Hosea uh, 1 and 10 and 11 in the place where it says, we are not, you are not the people of the Most High, there shall be said, you are the sons of the living power. Which means Israel, Yasha Allah, he's a prince with God. Where she is nourished for a time and times and uh, half a time, which is now, this is at the end of that, from the face of the serpent. Who's the serpent? This man. And the serpent casts out of his mouth water as a great flood after the woman. Now that goes to the armies of uh, Rome, but it also 
goes into the inf information, like InfoWars, giving you, they flooding you with information. That's why you got these uh, comedic motherfuckers, you got these Moors, you got the church, you got all these elements that these religions or these philosophies that Jake is a part of, and it's hard for them to come out of it. Now the ones that are of the elect, they're not gonna be deceived, they're gonna come out of it. 99.9% .9 of the people in this truth are formal, for the most part, formally uh, churchgoers. And the serpent casts out of his mouth water as a, as a flood after the woman that he might cause it to be carried away of the flood. And the earth helped the woman and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth. That's the armies. And the earth is talking about they went into Africa. And the dragon was wroth with the woman. When, and this is before Michael, the Lord, and Michael destroys the angel. So it's jumping around. And the dragon, that's why a lot of people can't get this, these books, get the understanding. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of a seed. This is, this is before the fact. This is before the Lord comes back, which keep the commandments, which we do. We keep the commandments. They kept the, kept the commandments back then, the, the three tribes, Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, and have the testimony of Yahweh Shai. So let me see if there's anything else. You know what? Let me do this. I'm not going to read this whole thing. I'm just going to come over here. So when you read the book, the chat, the various chapters of Revelation, it jumps around. The verses jump around. That's why so many people get confused with uh, Revelation uh, chapter 20. What is that? Verse 7 and verse 8. That we're going to be in the kingdom. And then a thousand years in the kingdom, the devil's going to regroup and he's going to take us down again. And the Lord got to come back and know that's not going to happen. You don't know how to line up these scriptures. Let me read a couple of verses of this. Close. It says, uh, Revelation 13, 1, and I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast. Now, now what John saw, like in Revelation 8, he's looking at all these different visions. It was like a hologram. Uh, around him. It was like a movie that he was in the side of the movie. Like if you watch the uh, uh, Star Trek, the next generation, they have a simulator where you want to go back to the time of the swashbucklers, the pirates. So this pirate actually appear and it would be all around you and you would feel like you were actually back there, which is, which is called a, holog a hologram. It makes it, you know, three 3D surround sound, you can feel it. Which is, that's what the metaverse is all about. So that's what um, John saw. It says, and I stood 13 and one, and I stood upon the sand of the sea. And so, so he, so like I said, in Revelation eight, it said there was a, he was looking for some more visions and there was a time of a space for about a half an hour. Cause he's looking around for the visions and nothing happens. Then about a half an hour, oh man, the visions are starting again. They would start, then they would go away. Then everything would be back to normal. Then he would see some more visions. So he didn't know, was, John didn't know what was going on. So what he did was he wrote it down. Now there's certain part in the scripture, where is that? I believe that's Revelation 10. Somebody can put it in there, I'm not gonna look for it. Where it says uh, that he heard Others, I think it was seven thunders, if I'm not mistaken. I'm not going to look for it. And he went to write, and the angel said, do not write. Do not write. It was told to Ezra, these visions that you give, give to the, give to the ones of understanding, but to the rest of the people, don't give. That's in 2 uh, 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 Ezra 12, around about the 36th verse. And also, I believe that's in... Um, Second Ezra's uh, 14, if I'm not mistaken. I'm not going to go to it. That's a whole nother lesson. It says, uh, rise up out of the sea. 
having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy, Roman Empire, first Roman Empire. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard. Now this is an amalgamation of the Romans. All the Edomite empires rolled into one beast, so to speak. This beast is different from this beast. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard. The leopard goes back to who? It goes back to Alexander. Let's see if that's the case. Let me put in the word leopard. Okay, good. It was only in here six times. One of the times was in Daniel. And after this, I beheld and lo, another like a leopard, which had upon the back of it four wings of a fowl. The beast had also four heads and dominion was given unto it. So now let's go to the uh, commentary. And I'll bet you they'll get it right. I'll be surprised if they don't. Remember, the key word is leopard, right? Let me do this. Let me, let me do this. Okay, they don't mention Alexander. But they mention it right here. Daniel 7, uh, 7 and 6. After this, I beheld and lo, another, like unto a, a leopard. The third kingdom is that of the Macedonians or Grecians, who under the command of Alexander the Greek. That's all we need. That's all we need. So these scholars know that the leopard in Daniel 7 is uh is Alexander the Greek rulership so now let's come back over here so this this beat beast represent the bear represent the Russians the leopard represents the uh Alexander because he's an Edomite the Russians are also Edomites Edomites are going to destroy Edomites a lion represents the UK short to continue for a short space revelation 17 revelation 13 and 2 and the beast which i saw was like unto a leopard alexander the greek the alex uh, the uh, greeks and his feet were like the feet of the bear that's the 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 beginning the be the, the the end of it which is the feet the base of it is the bear the bear is the russians because it's going to do away with this beast and his mouth uh, is and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. That's Great Britain. The official flag is a dragon and a lion, if I'm not mistaken. And the dragon gave him his power and seat and great authority. And I saw one of the, one of his heads as it was wounded to death. That's talking about the Roman Empire ancient Roman Empire, pagan Roman Empire, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. When was it healed? During the time of the Renaissance when they were taking down the dark nations. Anyway, with that, I'm going to say Shalom.